It's a perennial grass. Uh, it's a very robust grass. Um, and it's very competitive with the grasses that we want to grow or are more productive grasses, both native and some of our sown pasture species. It's a prolific seed producer. We've recorded up to 80,000 seeds per square metre produced uh, in, in dense GRT uh, over a growing season. And 90% of that seed is, is viable straight off the plant. And those seed, uh, once they get into the soil, um, they can remain viable for up to 10 years. And generally, the plant foliage is quite unpalatable, and uh, therefore your, your production from livestock can be less than uh, normal native grasses or sown pasture species. So in summary, it's an introduced, unpalatable, high biomass grass, which invades both productive pasture systems and environmental areas. So one of the principal ways of, of minimising the risk of uh, giant rasso grass seedlings establishing is to maintain higher levels of ground cover. So, um, and that provides competition for establishing giant rasso grass plants. So and there's two types. So you can have plants growing, which compete strongly with seedlings, and you can have a mulch layer, which basically, uh, you know, it's like mulch in the garden. It covers up the soil and stop seedlings or seed plants germinating. To maintain uh, higher levels of ground cover, you need to manage your grazing pressure. So remove stock when um, the grass cover is at a level which it's still going to provide that competition to suppress seedling uh, germination. As time goes on, if you can suppress that seedling germination, um, your actual control activities and con control costs will reduce because you're not always running around picking up those new plants in your pasture. So once, once ingested seed in, say, a cow, um, it can take seven days to pass through the, the gut of a cow and uh, end up on the ground in a cow pat. Of that seed that passes through the animal, about 20% remains viable and is there ready to grow at any time. Even with goats and, and sheep, they're all ruminant animals and they all will pass a proportion of the seed they eat will come out in their manure. So it's not you can't sort of um, say, I'm gonna graze goats and it'll all be good because they will still pass viable seed. So one of the things with giant rassile grass seed, it becomes sticky when it's wet it's got a sticky mucilage around the seed and it'll stick to everything from quad bikes to your boots to your clothes to your cows, your cattle dog. And they'll move it around and they'll move it around till it dries or it's washed off the particular vehicle or animal and so on. So this also applies to kangaroos or feral pigs, same sort of thing. So one of the ways that we can try and minimise seed spread is to not move around in GRT when it's seeding, and in particular uh, on a dewy morning when the seed is moist. If you can, say, muster or do your work you need to do in the paddock after that period, you will certainly minimise the risk of seed spread because the seed won't be wet and it won't stick to your vehicle. It might still get caught in things, but it certainly won't stick to your vehicle. And the other way is to, uh, if you know you've been driving around or suspect you've been driving or moving vehicles through uh, giant rast tail grass, um, it's always a good idea to have a wash down area and give that vehicle a clean as best you can. You'll never get it perfect, but again, it's about r reducing risk. Um, and in that area, you'll have seed, which you can then treat with a herbicide later on as the plants come up. And for livestock, when you're moving them around or on off property to another property and so on, and they've been grazing giant rastail grass, again, you'll need to hold them in for seven days before you transport them so they empty out. And you can do that by either putting them in a yard and feeding them on clean hay, or you can have designated clean paddocks or small holding paddocks where you can just run them through before you uh, load them onto a truck and ship them. Same applies if you're bringing stock onto your property and you don't know their origin or you know they're coming from GRT areas. Again, uh, keep them in the yards for seven days and feed them till they empty out. 
or have a holding paddock which they'll just move through and that's the paddock that you monitor more strictly and make sure there's got no um, GRT or no seeding GRT in those paddocks. And I guess generally it's about managing what comes onto your property and what goes off your property and this will include uh, visitors, this will include neighbours um, and other people traversing your property, so maybe the, elect the electricians ergon and so on, um, and just trying to minimise the risk and making sure they're clean, wash down your machinery when you come and when you go, just general principles like that. Also around your, your property, um, you can put buffer zones in, and we would recommend somewhere around 5 to 10 metres, probably 10 metres as a good buffer zone, and try and keep that clean of uh, um, seeding GRT plants. And that just gives you a buffer between you and your neighbour and allows you to manage that movement a bit better. So fire on its own is not a recommended management tool for giant rastail grass. And the reason being is giant rastail grass is highly tolerant of fire and actually responds and grows better with an annual burn or a, a periodic burn. Fire can control or kill up to 50% of the seed bank because most of the seed of giant rastail grass is close to the soil surface. If you're going to use fire, it needs to be used as part of an integrated management package where you've got something going to happen after the fire to control regrowth or new seedlings. And that might be we're going to uh, get rid of our giant rastail grass and sow uh, an improved pasture. So we might burn it. We might spray it with glyphosate to get rid of it and that's got the biomass gone and you've killed all the existing plants and then you can go into your pasture establishment phase after that. The short answer is yes. So applying fertiliser equates to increased protein and increased digestibility. Um, you can increase protein from 8% to about 18%. In, in young, fresh uh, GRT leaves, um, but by applying high rates of fertiliser. Now, whether that fertiliser uh, rate is economic to apply, well, that's really a business decision for each uh, land manager and whether that suits their business operation. There may be a better option is to look at supplementing livestock to help them use the GRT, and that may be a better or cheaper option, particularly in areas where you can't apply fertiliser or the application of fertiliser is impractical. So we might be able to use a particular supplement uh, to increase, but that's still a work in progress um, and you'd need some specific advice from uh, specialists in that area. So the take-home message is if you give GRT nutrition, it grows quicker, it is more palatable, and more digestible, but whether that's economic to do it is really a business decision for every landholder. So I guess the, the, the sort of take home message is that managing giant rat's tail or the process of managing it, it's not a one size fits all situation. There's a lot of nuance uh, in managing it, a lot of subtle differences between different paddocks, different soil types, different land uses, and, and different business models. Um, it impacts all of those. And when deciding on how to progress a management program, uh, the landholders need to get some good specialist advice about what is the best process. I would also suggest that even once they've got that and they embark on a process, they take a couple of years to learn how to use it and learn how, and that's by treating small areas, managing small areas and understanding how the management process will work um, before you spend lots of money and do large areas. Um, it's good to just take that time to learn because if you do you know, large areas and it comes unstuck, well, that's a lot of money that's just thrown away. So take the time and, and do a little bit of practice before you jump out in, and do large areas of uh, GRT control. <laughs>